Roblox has just released a brand new insane update to their Studio AI, which actually enables it to make adjustments inside of our Explorer. Here's just a couple quick cool things that we can do. One thing that it could do is actually change the color of every single tree inside of our game. It can also be used to convert a cobblestone castle into a plastic one, or duplicating the part that we have selected and spreading them out evenly. A more practical use case is using it to duplicate these coins and spread them evenly throughout our track. It can also be used to create some pretty nice lighting, or even add smoke to a chimney. Now, if you want to try this feature out yourself, what you're going to want to do is open up Studio and open up a project, even if it's just the base plate. Once you're actually inside of Studio, click on the file button at the top left hand corner of the screen, then go down to beta features. Once you open this up, you might see the assistant preview feature, and of course you're going to want to go ahead and select this, and then hit save. It'll probably tell you that you have to restart your Roblox Studio, but since I've already had this enabled, I don't have to restart this. Then, once you've restarted Studio and you do have it enabled, you should see the assistant button at the top right hand corner of the screen. Go ahead and click that to open it up, and then you should see a widget open up, which is the assistant right here. So if you've ever used ChatGPT before, or if you've ever really chatted with any AI, it pretty much works the exact same way. Now, the game that we're currently in is actually one of the templates that Roblox provides to us when you open up Studio. I think it's the castle one. So inside of this map, we have a couple of different treats. If we look inside of the workspace, we can see there's a folder called foliage, and inside of here is actually where all of our trees are at. Now, if we look inside of one of the tree models, we should see some parts inside of them. And these are union operations, which are called leaves. So I had an idea and I want to recolor all of the leaves of every single tree. So we can go over to the assistant and I'm going to say recolor the leaves part, even though this is a union operation, we can still describe it as a part because it has the color and brick color property of each tree model. And then we'll hit enter and we'll see what we get back. And wow, that actually worked the first time. So we can see what it returned. Acknowledge this grid will change the color of the leaves part in each tree model to yellow. Check the console for any output. And we can see that the script is right here and it already ran. And we can see all the leaves have been changed to yellow. Now, if this change turned out to be something that we didn't like, we can undo this change by hitting control Z. And let's say that the AI did not work or this script that it provided to you did not work. What you can do is click this button right here, which kind of looks like a refresh icon. And that'll basically re-ask the question to the AI hopefully giving you a different answer. If you hit the refresh button a couple of times and you're still not getting the correct answer, you should probably change what you're actually telling the AI because you probably aren't writing it in the best way. In the description, I'll leave a couple of different links which you can check out to learn more about what the AI actually knows, what information it has, and some tips on how you could communicate with the AI a little bit easier to get better results. Now, another thing that we can do is say, instead of updating a bunch of parts colors, we can also change the material property of a bunch of parts as well. So what I'm going to do is select this castle wall right here, and we can see that the material is cobblestone. Now, what I want to do is update the material property of every single part, which currently has their material set to cobblestone, and we'll change it to, I guess, just plastic. So what I'm going to say is, can you update the material of all cobblestone parts to be plastic? And it does not seem like anything actually happened. Oh, it's trying to check if the name contains the word cobblestone cobblestone in it. You know what? Looking back at my question, I guess that is pretty fair. I'm going to go ahead and retype this question. So I'm going to say, can you update the material of all parts with the material of cobblestone to be plastic? And now that we've done that, we can actually see that the material has changed. And now our castle looks like a plastic castle instead of it being cobblestone. It actually looks pretty cool, I'm not going to lie. So another idea that I had is what if you wanted to just create a bunch of different spawn locations around the spawn location that you already have created? It feels like a random idea, but I think this will kind of stem different ideas in your guys' head as well. Okay, my question's a little bit long-winded here. It's a little bit hard to see in that box, so I'm just going to enter it. I said, can you duplicate the spawn location I have selected, create eight more, and spread them evenly around the currently selected one? And wow, just like that, what did it do? Well, it created a bunch of other spawn locations and literally spread it evenly around this one right here. Now, keep in mind that even though we were able to actually interact with something that we had selected, this doesn't mean that the AI knows what you actually have selected. It just understands that it can use the selection service that Roblox Studio provides to us, and then it's able to get whatever you have selected that way and it only knows that it's a spawn location because I specified that inside of my message. So I'm trying to point that out so that you don't think that the AI understands more than it actually does. And we can see the spawn locations have been spread out. Now, another example of using similar logic where this could be a lot more useful at is in this 2D runner template that Roblox Studio provides us as well. In this template, there are coins which are laid out through the track. Now, currently we can see kind of one coin on each of the different tracks. What if we wanted to duplicate this so that there's a total of three coins and they're evenly spread out on this track? So what I ask is can you duplicate the model I have selected twice so that there's a total of three models? I want the two new models to be positioned in front of, and then parentheses, I said 
z-axis and behind by five studs. So essentially what I did is I selected this coin and then using the move tool, I can move it forwards and backwards. And this allows me to see what axis I can tell the AI that I wanted to modify so that it's able to position them correctly in front and behind it. Now it returned us some code, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. And once I use it, we can see that it did duplicate the coins two times, but it didn't actually move them on the correct axis. So what I'm gonna do is I'll undo this, then I'll hit the refresh icon, and we can hope that it gives us better results this time. Now, unfortunately, it seems like it did the exact same thing. So what I'm gonna try to do is just go ahead and paste the message in once again, and instead of saying the Z axis, we'll just say X axis, because maybe I'm wrong, even though I don't think that I am. So I'll go ahead and undo the changes that the previous one made, and then I'll go ahead and send that message. Okay, and now for whatever reason, the Y axis is being adjusted. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on here. We'll hit the refresh one, see if we get different results, and of course we don't. Okay, maybe we should have asked the question in a different way, but this time I'm just going to say the Y axis, and I mean, it has to work, right? It, it has to. Okay, there we go. That seems to have worked. Now, if we don't like the space in between them, then maybe we want to space them out more. We could either do this by hand if we wanted to, or we could even do something like we see that's about 20 studs. So what we'll do is just undo the changes. We'll go ahead and grab our message once again, paste it inside of here, and this time we'll say to move it 20 studs. And then once we do that, we can see that it's duplicated both the coins once again, and this time they're spread apart by 20 studs. Now, we could even do something similar with things besides the coins. We could do it with things like the spike traps, or maybe like the jump boost right here. I'm just pointing out that there's so many different scenarios where using the AI can be useful, like how we just saw. Now, another cool example that I have for you is, what if you're like me, and you might be, you know, developing on Roblox for a couple of years at this point, but you're still not really too into lighting? Like, personally, I... I don't know anything about lighting for the most part. So what if we want to spice our game up a little bit? We can go ahead and ask the AI. So what did I do? I said, could you adjust my lighting to be bright and cartoony? Then we'll go ahead and run the script. And we can see that once we've run the script, it is actually a pretty nice, bright and cartoony lighting. I actually like really like that. Now, another cool example could be adding smoke to a chimney. With this chimney, there is actually like kind of chimney smoke already coming out of it, which we could delete or leave there. It doesn't really matter. But we can see that in this Roblox template, they actually created a part which is called chimney smoke. And it's just a little square part that's invisible inside of here. Otherwise, what I would have done is probably select this union and then make the smoke come from this part but I'll go ahead and select the chimney smoke part. So with the part selected, I said, can you add heavy smoke rising up to the sky from the chimney part I have selected? And it messed up because it tried to find a part inside of the workspace called chimney. Even though I said the part that I have selected, I'm gonna go ahead and try to rerun that same prompt. And I think that I'm confusing the AI with my question. So instead of saying the chimney part, I'm just going to say the part I have selected. Okay, sometimes it can be very annoying. I don't understand why it's having difficulty selecting this part. Okay, I tried to re-ask the question in a different way because I'm not sure why it wasn't working before. Now we can see that that question is actually working because it's using the selection service and we can see that smoke has actually been added to this. And I actually like how this looks, but maybe you want to re-ask the question again, this time being a little bit more specific. So this time I'm going to say to the part I have selected, add red smoke quickly rising upward from the chimney. And when we do that, we can see the smoke looks a little bit different. We can see that it's red and it's moving faster this time. Now let's go directly below the chimney where we can actually see that there's a fire currently going. Going. And what I'm going to do is try to delete the fire from inside of here. So I just deleted the actual fire that was going on inside of here. And inside of the little fire pit, they had a part which is called fire part. And that's where the particles were being emitted from. So I'm going to go ahead and select this part. And then I'm going to tell the AI what I want. I'm going to start simple by saying, using the part I have selected, create a small fire for my chimney. And okay, there we go, boys, we got fire. But of course, I'm going to undo that because we want it to be a little bit cooler. So this time I said, using the part I have selected, create a bright fire for my chimney, which gives off like and make some smoke. I actually meant to say light, not like, but uh, we'll see what the AI does for us. Oh, and it looks like I used up uh, the AI limit today, but I can't actually read what the limit is. Well, unfortunately, I had a couple of more ideas that I wanted to show off using Roblox's AI, but turns out I've used up all my turns for today. Either way, I think we got to look at a couple of different pretty cool use cases. And if you have any of your own, please leave a comment down below sharing it. Or feel free to go down below in the description and click the link to join our Discord. I'm really excited to see what some of you guys are using this for because I honestly feel like there's almost endless possibilities out there. Anyways, with all that being said, I hope that you did enjoy the video. As always, if you did, make sure you smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and turn the post notifications on so you get notified every time I upload a brand new Roblox development video. Anyways, I hope that you have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.